Okay, again, uh, good morning. My name is Julie McElrath. I work for the City of Pasadena Foothill Workforce Development Board. I'm a business liaison. Today, you're going to hear about services that are no cost to you. We are going to talk about the rapid response team. The rapid response team provides information on services to, to help you join uh, this transition. You're going to hear about the Foothill Employment and Training Connection. You're going to hear about the uh, Employment Development Department uh, in reference to their unemployment insurance. You're going to hear from uh, someone that's going to give you information about financial advising. Um, from New York Life, and you will hear from someone from Covered California. Today, our first speaker is America Solis Bowman. She is the employment uh, manager for the Employment Development Department. She is going to talk to you about the unemployment insurance. Mm -hmm. Hello, good morning. So first, I would like to just say thank you for joining us today. Uh, we definitely have a historic volume that our department is trying to mitigate and as quickly as possible. So we are streamlining our processes to file claims and pay benefits faster. Um, you have to remember that when laws are changed, it also means that, that a system has to be reprogrammed and um, certain criteria has to be changed in a system that had worked uh, normally uh, with, with other factors. So um, I do want to say that it has been um, something that our department has had to implement and has done as quickly as possible. So we also have established a new call center that provides you technical assistance. And this is open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And it's important that you know that they're able to go ahead and help you register, um, do password resets, navigate, and online claim filing. They are not actually um, the regular unemployment insurance uh, uh, hotline so they, they basically can provide only technical assistance. So if you're locked out of your benefits program online, you would be able to go ahead and get your account information. Again, we're upgrading our system and servers and hourly health checks on EDD systems, minimizing ser service disruptions because we have had an, again, unsurmountable um, or a historic amount of individuals that are claiming at one time. And so this is, did have some service interruptions. EDD uh, is offering job seekers um, information through appointment by uh, virtue of calling in your local America's Job Center uh, of California uh, center. So you're able to go ahead and go to our EDD website and find the listing of your local AJCCs. And also there has been emergency funds that have been given to these AJCCs to provide services, which Julie will talk later on about. Uh, all right, so let's move on. The, the Employment Development Department has different branches. So many times you might be calling America's Job Center and think that you're calling an unemployment insurance office, but in actuality, there are different branches. An employment insurance branch is um, one. There's a disability insurance branch. And I am one of the representatives of the Workforce Services Branch, which is, uh, also includes labor market information. Unemployment insurance is uh, to provide you uh, some service or some amount of money that, that can assist you uh, to, to live while you're looking for work. So this is usually our normal amount was for anywhere from $40 to 40, 450 a week based on your weekly or quarterly earnings of the previous year and a half. 
there has been a new $600 weekly st stimulus payment that applies to those of March 29th to July 25th, 2020. So recently, uh, you know, that has been, that has already been implemented. Uh, in the near future, we're hoping to go ahead and implement the 13 week extension available through those individuals who were uh, unemployed from March to December 26, 2020. At this time, it has not yet been um, put into our system yet. Again, everything has been implemented through phases as quickly as possible, but the 13 week extension is not as of yet available to, to our claimants. You will be notified, you should be notified through mail, but I would also suggest that you go ahead and have, um, make sure that you're looking at our EDD website for any new updates. Any new information on what our system or the department is going to do is gonna be on our website. That's edd.ca.gov. So that's edd.ca.gov. So the Federal CARES Act had certain um, factors that affected our unemployment insured benefits to claimants. There was a federal pandemic unemployment insurance compensation referred to as the PAC by EDD. That's the $600 stimulus payment in addition to your weekly benefit amount. And you did have to have a qualifying um, claim in order to be able to receive that. Then there's the pandemic emergency unemployment compensation, which is the additional 13 weeks for those that had exhausted their unemployment insurance claim. The pandemic unemployment insurance claim provides 39 weeks of benefits to those who uh, don't usually qualify for unemployment insurance. So normally with unemployment insurance, it is the employee that is actually um, applying for unemployment insurance and, um, and the employer verifies whether they're able to go ahead and uh, you know, uh, they give their feedback on whether the individual um, they feel is qualified or if they can, they can contest a claim. Um, Self-employed uh, independent contractors did not usually qualify for unemployment insurance. But again, this is a historic um, new, new development under the CARES Act. And so individuals were able to go ahead and apply for this. And they applied, uh, they can apply between uh, February 2nd and December 26th. There is no waiting period, which is also another uh, new uh, implementation. And the weekly benefit ranges from 167 to 450, depending on their 2019 earnings. And this, the 600 stimulus uh, also is uh, applied March 29th um, and December, through December 26, 2020. So the, the additional amount of $600, again, was if you qualify for $1 or more of benefits. And it's applicable to most of the unemployment insurance claims, but does not apply for those that are under training extensions or special school benefits. And it is for those individuals that are basically applying from March 29, 2020, to July 25th, 2020, unless there is a, another um, congressional act or another, you know, but at this time under CARES Act, that is what the, the time frame is. If you were already paid for the week under uh, ending April 4th, EDD has made an adjustment of payment for $600 during the week of April 10th, 2020. Um, during a normal claim, you usually receive benefits of 20, up to 26 weeks in a one year time frame. So under the pandemic emergency unemployment insurance compensation, it provides an additional 13 weeks 
and when you, um, once you've exhausted your regular claim. It applies only when you have, uh, for unemployment, March 29, 2020 to December 26, 2020. The $600 weekly stimulus applies between March 29, 2020 and December 26, 2020. Again, EDD is waiting for the Department of Labor to start programming. Additional state and federal extensions may become available at a later time if authorized by California or the federal government. Uh, because of COVID-19, Again, another uh, unprecedented uh, uh, new rule is that the seven day waiting period is waived, which normally under most unemployment insurance claims, you had a seven day waiting period. Work search, um, since customers are not required to look for work each week to be eligible for these benefits. However, they do need to be available for work. That means that even though um, you're not seeking work, you're able to, to, to work um, and attest to that. Certifying for benefits. Customers are not required to submit their biweekly certifications for the weeks ending March 14th through May 9th, 2020. Payments will be automatically made, including the $600 per week stimulus payment. But you must report wages using Ask EDD. So it is really important, and I cannot stress this enough, that you do report any earnings that you have um, because you do not want to have a uh, overpayment or a false statement saying that you, well, not a false statement, let me take that back, but you do not want to have any overpayment issues. So please make sure that you report any wages through Ask UBB. So again, for you that are applying for unemployment insurance, the best way for you to apply is through our EDD website, UI Online, and that you create a benefits program online account. They should be receiving, um, once you do that, well, first of all, make sure to make a copy, a print, save the confirmation number if you get a confirmation number of any kind, uh, any paperwork that you also submit to unemployment insurance, please make sure that you keep a copy of and, and uh, keep in a particular area. Um, customers should be, once they create that um, account, they should be able to uh, receive a confirmation email within a few days notifying them that it's been created. And if you have any technical issues, again, you then can call 8 a.m. to 8 p.m to help with registration and password resets. And I will later on tell you that phone number. There is also um, a way that for those individuals that are not able to file online, they can complete the paper application and submit as directed on the form. Please do not mail your paper application to a local office. It will only delay the process or may get lost, um, not lost, but you may not be able to, to get this expedited. So you would need to follow the directions on the form. When applying for unemployment insurance, you must um, provide your last 18 months of employment information. So some of the tips is really just to go ahead and organize yourself so that you have as much information to provide. Again, UI Online is fastest to process uh, your claim. And you can do the save as draft if you're completing it online. So you have until 8 p.m. Uh, on Saturday. So you wanna make sure that when you apply, you know that uh, that you have um, Sunday through Saturday, that's how the week runs. So you wanna be able to save and complete your information. If you are saving it as a draft, uh, that it is completed and submitted by Saturday, 8 p.m. Um, if you are out of work, make sure that you are putting that you're affected by COVID-19. 
so uh, to receive the waiting pe peri uh, period waiver. And when selecting your industry and occupation, select the one that best describes your job. This is very important. So please make sure that this is also going to help you with your CalJobs registration. Do not indicate you're out of work due to a strike or lockout unless it is a result of a labor union dispute over working conditions. And the best tip is to go and onto YouTube and select how to apply for UI benefits, file a claim. Once the claim is received, um, it is important uh, by, by mail that a confirmation that your claim was filed. Okay, so you should receive that by mail. And um, how the weekly benefit amount was computated. So make sure that you take a close look. And let me just say that please, please, please make sure that you put in the right social security number. Uh, so many times people do this very quickly and they don't enter in their correct social security number or transpose numbers. So make sure that you have the correct social security number on um, when you're filing and then also when you're receiving your notice of award to create any, uh, to make sure that you don't create identity issues. And also you will be emailed an EDD customer account number to create and connect your claim to your benefits program online. Okay, that's a UI online account. This is very important. Any documents that you receive with unemployment from unemployment insurance, please keep in a select area in a folder. If you have also emails, I would so, so, you know, suggest that you keep it in a particular folder so that you're organized and can go back and refer to information. So um, basically, like I said, does say read, review, and respond to all communication. If you are being asked to submit identif identification, this is essential and as fast as possible. So make copies and keep copies of yourself of your the documents that you're sending, so that you know what you've sent. But you need to respond and review and, and review everything that is sent to you by the department. Okay, so certifying for unemployment insurance benefits. You can do this again by your account. That should be and is the easiest and fastest way. Um, the UI online account. Or you can even do it over the phone. So those individuals that do not have or are not as tech savvy would like to do it over the telephone, they can call in and use the 866-333-4604 number. If you're mailing in, if there's a need for you to mail in any of your uh, claim forms, it does, um, you know, it, it will be processed, but again, expect extra time for delivery and processing. Again, remember that any payments between March 14th to May 9th um, will be automatically paid, but report wages if you have any. All right. So there's also a debit card, um, which will be uh, mailed to you. So once you've been um, approved uh, for unemployment insurance and you have, uh, they will, you have a claim and payment, they will go ahead and deliver you um, to the mail, the mailing address that you provided unemployment insurance. Uh, by a vendor, which is Bank of America. I have to tell you that due to the unprecedented uh, volume of claims, the card has, uh, has been um, a little longer in, in being received by claimants because just of the sheer volume. This card you need to keep for your records or in case you'll need it for the next three years, I would say even three to five years. Um, this is also for the other programs. So if you were to have applied next year for disability insurance, this same card can be used and is connected to you by your social security number. So please keep it for uh, future use. 
Um, if there, if you need a replacement, you must contact Bank of America and, and their customer service line. So it works like any ATM, which is uh, basically like a visa. Um, and you can also set alert, uh, alerts whenever a deposit is made or you have a low balance. So the phone number is on there as well. Um, I find it very helpful to go to the EDD website and look at the Bank of America section. So if there's anything that's happening or an alert or um, some type of technical or delay, you, um, you should be able to get that information on our, through our EDD website connected to, um, to the Bank of America. Okay, so, so it does say do not contact Bank of America EDD debit card customer service under any circumstances regarding your claim. This is only going to delay those other individuals that are contacting them regarding their, custom, their particular debit card. So again, they are not going to answer any questions regarding your unemployment insurance claim. So as a recap, um, Doing it online or through the telesearch is going to be most effective. Set alerts. Respond promptly and make sure you read everything that comes through EDD email. Um, be available for any phone interview to make sure that you can resolve any issues. And um, again, look for the website for any helpful tips or any educational videos that can make sure that you are staying on top of your claim. And for anything that comes up, you can go ahead to our website. We do have um, our website that has also uh, press releases so that the, whenever any system changes happen, um, for example, like the, we're still uh, waiting for the 13 week extension, all of that will be posted on our website. Um, so we, be familiar with UI Online, the self-service telephone number. Unemployment insurance has um, one particular new number. So first, let me just say regular regarding your claim, if you need to make changes to your claim or you have inquiries regarding your specific claim, 8 a.m. to 12 noon, Monday through Friday, you can call 1-800-300-5616. There's also other languages that are available. Um, the phone numbers are there um, on the screen. However, uh, if you need technical assistance like before, like they were saying reset your password or how to apply um, uh, online, get your account information, meaning your account for your benefits program online, you should be able to go ahead and call that 1-833-978-2511 from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So this is not, again, regarding your specific claim per se, but it is about technical or like some uh, help with UI online. The UI self-service online, uh, self-service line is again open 24 hours, seven days a week at 866-333-4606. And with that, I think you can Go ahead and open up the questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, America, for sharing uh, unemployment services and how people can apply for unemployment uh, unemployment insurance. Next, we're going to hear from uh, Jane Reese Wilkinson. She's going to talk about Covered California. I think you should get your pens and paper out. This is very valuable information. And um, if you have any questions, please type your questions in the chat line, chat box, and we will answer them at the end of the session. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Julie. Good morning. How are you, Jane? Michael, can you shut the hall door? 
Sorry. Hi, yes. Um, this is Jamie Wilkins. I hope everyone's doing okay today. Um, as of March 20th, um, I know a lot of people, um, oh, Cover California has special enrollment for those that lost their um, health insurance. So um, it is the answer to COBRA. No one should be paying for COBRA because it's way too much money. Um, the great thing for Cover California is that they actually give you a subsidy towards your payment. So depending on your income and your um, dependents, your household, then um, you may qualify for a subsidy. Okay, we can move on to the next slide. So again, COBRA is too expensive. Um, Cover California will lower your, your, um, your payment and you can change your plan. Um, it's a, it's a great thing. I have some clients that pay as low as $1. So when you do get on unemployment, your income is usually not that high. So almost most of the time you can get um, a subsidy. But then again, it does depend on your household. Um, if, you, if you're making under, let's say there's one person and you're making under 18,000 a year, then you will qualify for Medi-Cal and I can also assist with that too. You can, you can move on. So as you see here, a family of one, anything under 17,000 to 37, you go to Medi-Cal. And depending on your income, it could go all the way up to 74940 and you may qualify for a subsidy. And then you see the example for two and you see the example for three. So the way that I can help you is that I do your free quote and enrollment. There, there is no charge. Um, I do everything for you and I stay your agent to help you navigate through this. Um, it's very simple. It's an online application, so we do not have to meet. It's an electronic sign, um, signature. So if you need help, you, you see my contact information. Um, give me a call. You can Visit my website to learn more about me, CoverCaliforniaMedicare.com. It's very simple. Okay, thank you. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Um, next, we're going to have Tina Connolly. She is going to talk about finances. She has had the opportunity to go out with our agency uh, for over the past five years to talk about how people can convert their 401ks or roll them over. We're not promoting any uh, financial services one way or the other, but she does uh, work. She has her own business with New York Life. She's going to talk to you about uh, ways that you can save money and maybe possibly doing things that you may not think that you could do with your 401k and rollovers. Tina? Yes. Thank you very much, Julie. How are you? 
Um, yeah, so my name is Tina Kamaling, and yes, I am a New York Life agent, but this is not anything to do with the company or any products that is being offered. This is general information that is, you know, put together for you, designed for you with regards to current environment that we're having right now. Um, listening to the rest of the presentation that's happening right now, um, that has been provided for you with regards to unemployment, covered California, it's basically, it all revolves around the sustainability um, of ourselves, financial sustainability. And, and I know that a lot of people who might have lost their jobs because of the situation, of course, there's a lot of stressful, you know, things that's happening with you right now, uh, especially financially. And so I hope to be able to provide you with some answers so that, you um, you know, it can help you navigate again through this uncertain times. Let's go on to the next slide, please. So again, with for people that has been affected, so for people that are on the call right now, whether you guys are the employees that have been directly affected or employers or organization that may be going through this type of situation. Um, so the first thing is, of course, the anxiety is through the roof and what are you going to do, right? It's very overwhelming. Um, you know, again, the, the the right thing to do is, of course, assess your financial situation. Find out where you stand financially. This is the time for you to look into the different type of assets that you may have or things that you may not know that you have or things that you may have that you don't understand. Um, but definitely the time to review these things. Um, outlining of your expenses is definitely another helpful thing to do. And, um, you know, as far as like what your basic expenses are from mortgage to rent, should you refinance or not refinance, utilities, transportation, all of these basic expenses that you need to budget in order to live comfortably. And I know that sometimes when it comes to these money matters, it's things that to some people may not, you don't want to deal with it because it's stressful and you're overwhelmed. And with little bit of guidance, such as myself, these are the things that we can discuss. You know, I can spend a few minutes with you and I know that within 10 to 15 minutes of just a, you know, quick conversation, no charge or anything like that, it will definitely help you get um, go through this whole process and this whole situation that you may be um, experiencing. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so with regards to the pandemic that's happening, the COVID-19, there's also, of course, a stimulus package um, that has been included and basically provisions that have been adjusted um, during this pandemic. So this is not the normal way, but these are some of the adjustment that has uh, been provided for people that are in need um, it, when it comes to tapping into their retirement assets. So let me just preface it by retirement assets are assets that is supposed to provide you retirement income at retirement age. So we're looking at normally age 65 or older around that range that it's supposed to provide you with an income. But if you're not at that age yet, and then, you know, you have this situation um, of being, uh, you know, laid off and, and what are you going to do? And you may need to tap into those uh, assets that is supposedly programmed for the future. And what are the consequences that can happen? Well, there are, like I said, there's some um, adjustments that's been made. Things like, for example, penalties. Uh, normally, there are penalties if you were to take money out before age 59 and a half, and that penalty is 10% on top of any taxes that you have to pay. Taxes would range anywhere from 20% to 30%, depending on um, the income that you may have. So. At adding all of that up, you may be able to lose like 40% and sometimes higher than that. But for right now, the penalties, which is like I said, 10%, could be um, reduced or waived during this pandemic time. And, you know, this is again a temporary situation. So that's bullet point number one. Bullet point number two, um, if you are still with the 401k of the company that you're in, there might be some loan provisions that are quote unquote relaxed, meaning that you can probably, you can loan up to $100,000 and the payments um, 
are also relaxed in a sense that instead of having to pay it like within a short period of time, they have extended that period of time. But then again, these adjustments are varies from one plan to another. So it's not like a straight across rule, but there are some provisions that might be benefit for you with, with, with regards to the situation that you may be going through. Um, Anything that is coronavirus related distributions, um, again, depending on the plan that you have, might be, you know, um, not as strict as it used to be, but it all depends on the plans that you have. Um, raising limits on allowable loans and withdrawals. So sometimes, again, those are restricted, but during this pandemic, depending on plan to plan, those limits have been, you know, adjusted to, to benefit you and the payments may be extended. So this is the, uh, um, the not uh, reminder, you know, you, when you take the action, you want to take action with caution because these assets are always going to be taxable pandemic or not. So it definitely is going to affect you. Either it's going to affect you now or it's going to affect you later, but it will definitely affect you significantly. So the use of guidance of a professional um, such as myself in making decision, it will definitely help you because um, these type of actions that you may be taking can severely impact your financial future. And I say that strongly, this is something that we have read in, you know, a few different articles. And, um, and I have seen, of course, with some of the people that I have uh, assisted, that it definitely have affected them severely. And it's not a good thing. Um, you know, so again, when it comes to your mortgage, you don't want to mortgage your future, especially if you have, if you have other options. So the unique, um, you know, benefit that for, for you, the ones that are listening to this call is that I can help you with no charge at all and just be, be able to, you know, um, help you and you don't have to call an 800 number. I will, you know, put in my contact information, my direct contact information. You can email me or text me Saturday, Friday, whatever it might be. It seems like we're all working 24 seven these days, um, but I can definitely assist you with that. Let's go on to the next slide. So bottom line, when it comes to your retirement assets, it, it boils down to four different options. One is distribu distribution in cash. But if you distribute it in cash, there are the consequences are big thing is the taxes. So, you know, again, the taxes can add up anywhere from 20, 30, and to, in some situations up to 40%. So you've got to be mindful and careful with doing that. And again, having a quick conversation of 10, 15 minutes can definitely make a much better plan for you. Um, next call, uh, next, uh, next box there is, can, I'm sorry, go back, <laughs> keeping it in the current plan. Um, so if you've been laid off and you can keep it in the current plan, however, you know, it may not be the best scenario for you because in a sense, you're leaving it with that employer and you're no longer a part of that employer. So that's, you know, another option for you. The third option is that you can roll it over into a new employer's plan if you have a new employer, but if you don't have a new employer, then it brings us to that fourth box, which is rolling it over into your own IRA. IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. And by rolling it over into an IRA, it definitely provides you with a lot of different options, anywhere from guaranteed growth, something that does not get affected by the stock market, something that would have a certain amount, guaranteed amount of income for you at retirement. Um, so these are some of the benefits that you have. Um, and again, I encourage that to reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to assist you. Um, 10, 15 minutes of a call, you know, no, no, um, uh, uh, strings attached <laughs> and no commitment and but definitely will help you out with um, you know any questions and any decisions that you may take in the future um, so that is my portion and um, I will include my question uh, my information in the chat room thank you Ju Julie Yeah. 
Chris Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, today you're going to hear about the Foothill Workforce Development Board. We receive our funding from the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. Um, we service six cities. We service the city of Pasadena, South Pasadena, Arcadia, Monrovia, Sierra Madre, and Duarte. We're co-located inside the Employment Development Department. We're like a one-stop shop. We have a variety of different um, agencies co-located under the same uh, location. Um, the services under normal circumstances where you would be able to come in to access would be case management services where we could assist you with finding out what your needs are, what type of um, occupational clusters would be good for you to go into. We also would have uh, approved training courses that we could pay for. We can uh, assist with career assessment. With the career assessment, it tells you the different occupational clusters that you would be good at going into. Uh, we have a variety of different seminars. The city of Pasadena offers, um, we've been awarded over three years uh, entrepreneurship program that we have here on site through a community block grant from the city of Pasadena. This is a very good program, it's at no cost to you, but you do have to live in the uh, city of Pasadena. There are some income guidelines for that particular program. We have on the job training where if you are gonna be hired by an employer and they're gonna teach you some new tangible skills, we would be able to reimburse the employer up to half of your salary up to $5,000, not to exceed six uh, months of earnings. Uh, we assist with job search, positive recruitments, people, um, employers and businesses come here on site to utilize our facilities to actually recruit people. We've, um, one of the big um, employers that we've been helping lately is the census. We also have a variety of different other resources that you can access. We have a variety of um, information where we can refer you out to other resources, um, depending upon what your needs are. So at this time, I would like to thank all of our uh, guests for being here. Thank you for participating in this uh, actual webinar. And we're going to open it up for um, chat questions. We're going to start with the unemployment insurance related questions first. Okay, so all right, if I can find um keys. That's it here. So uh the first question says, uh good morning. Thank you for doing this event. Uh I have not received any April benefits. Uh I received UI benefits for March and May, but not April. Can you help? Okay, so that, I mean, that is a specific claim information, and we would then say that you have to call the 1-800 number, the 1-800-300-5616. I do understand that that is sometimes, um, you know, hard to get through. I would so suggest that you go ahead and call uh, our local uh, Pasadena EDD Workforce Services Office here at 626 3047922. That's again, 323, I'm sorry, 626 And press zero for workforce services. And um, we might be able to go ahead and try to connect you to unemployment insurance. We will try to do our best to connect you with them. Uh, okay, another question says, uh, when reporting income, uh, number of hours times rate of pay, the system does not take half hours. Should we round up or down? I would say that it's always better to round up and not down. You don't want to have an issue of overpayment. So um, it's always going to take into account your gross wages. So it has to be uh, the specific uh, hours and your rate of pay. And uh, for... Uh, there not to be any wages in questions, I would just round up. Okay, another question says, 
uh, my employer got the small business loan and has called me back. I used to work 22 hours. They have promised me my 22 hours for May and June with no guarantee of work or hours from July 1st onwards. Uh, I have to now verify my hours. My understanding is that I now will no longer need EDD since I was called back for the 22 hours I was working prior to being laid off. What happens in July when my hours will be cut again? Am I able to apply again? Uh, uh, I can come online to speak one-on-one -on -one if needed. Okay. So I, I, what I would do is I would continue to report the wages that you're receiving to see if you still qualify for, um, you're saying that with 22 hours, you would be more than your weekly benefit amount. However, I would just continue to report um, those wages. If EDD um, feels that you are already back to work, they will not be uh, sending you the, the continued claim forms. So you would then be reopened. Again, this is an unprecedented, you know, um, um, situation where a lot of the rules that would normally apply um, have changed. So when you are unemployed, you know, I would suggest uh, in July that you would then reapply and uh, you go through the same process as you do uh, opening a UI claim online. Um, that's it for questions. Uh, also, we put in uh, our workforce services phone number in chat. Uh, Tina has also put in her information, and Jane Reese has also put in her information in the chat. So uh, if you want to write that down. All right. Thank you very much. Again, thank you all for listening to the services that we help to provide at no cost to you um, through this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. If you have any other uh, questions or concerns, you can reach out to us. And again, thank you for participating in this webinar. Have a great day.